Hello YouTube, Andrew Gordon here. I have another video for you, a pretty cool study. This time we're going to link the numerical, some numerical patterns from Genesis 1-1 throughout the Bible. And the theme is linking God's eternal purposes for the Jewish people and kind of follow it through to the end. And let's see what you think. The cool thing about this, so this is for, this video is for everybody, but um, let me just show you. I had these things printed out for a week now. I've been meaning to do this for a little bit. And one of these scriptures is Isaiah 60. Now that might not mean anything to you, but if your name is Mandy from Seek Heavenly Things, she just did a video this morning I saw where she was on a Zoom with some of the other girls and God gave her a scripture, gave her Isaiah 60. In 10 minute video kind of explaining Isaiah 60 and some pretty cool things and you know themes in there for the rapture and stuff, but it was just really interesting because I had this Isaiah 60, this the study printed out for a week now. Um, so we're gonna link it. We're gonna do the math, guys. Um, so everybody enjoy. Let's go. All right. One thing, cool thing, let's remi to remind to remind you is uh, 754. Hebrew standard value for Jesus. You have Yehoshua's 363, Hamashiach 391 for 754. And just a little bonus at the beginning. You have Jerusalem. You have the height of Jerusalem is 754. So cool. Anywho. Alrighty. Let's get started. Okay, so open up your... So first of all, I would say... Have your calculators handy so you could participate. And open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 66. Alrighty. Actually, yeah, open up there and then I'm going to we'll, uh, do some preliminary stuff. Alright, Isaiah 66. I'm just getting it up on my app, guys, here. My Bible app. All right. So just to remind you, okay, and you can, you know, get your cal calculator out. You guys know the website, livinggreeknt.org, Genesis 1-1. If, if you add uh, words 1 and 3, 1 and 3, that's 999. Uh, words 2, 4, and 5 is 999 again. Words 3, 3, 5, 6 is 888. And words 3, 5, and 7 add up to 777. So you have... You have Completion, Jesus Christ, or Jesus in standard Greek. And then you have a double stamp of the Holy Spirit on that pattern. And also, don't forget the 313 pattern. Words 1 and 7, 1209, 31 times 3, times 13, 313, 313, 313. Alpha the Omega, the all off the top. All right. So let's get started. So, all right. Isaiah 66. This pattern is going to show itself in the last chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah is probably one of the most important prophets. I don't need to belabor that point. Hundreds of prophecies foreshadowing the coming Messiah. Super important. And one of the most important prophecies for us. It's starting off this whole thing is Isaiah. It's chapter uh, verse 66 verses 7 through 9. Okay, so I'm going to read that to you. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery, says your God? All right. So that is a very well-known passage talking about Israel being born in a day, connecting the pattern at the beginning to the beginning of the end, right? So we, un we all understand that Israel being born in a day had to happen to kick off this final gen you know, season that we are in. 
And then so so this pattern, where does it repeat itself? So we're gonna on that website, Living Greek and T they have a video. Oh sorry, you guys the lighting. Isaiah and the hidden code in Genesis 1 1. Again, I'm not gonna do the calculations for you on the screen, but I would say get your calculators out. If you start from right to left, verse 7, 251 plus 448 plus 49 plus 251 is 999. If you go to the bottom, this last row, not the beginning of 9, but here, 26 plus 41 plus 61 plus 95 plus 776 is 999. Now this word here is, it's one word, but it has two values. It's connected by a hyphen, and it's still, it's considered still one word in Hebrew. Um, 50 plus 410 plus 428 is 888. And then finally, if you go first word down in each verse, 251 plus the 410 plus 50. So 251 plus 460 plus 66 gets you 777. Linking the pattern in Genesis 1-1 to Isaiah 66, Israel being born in a day, the beginning of the final uh generation or however you guys want to think about that uh, the other thing let's go to the end and do some numbers all right so um just interesting again that in the last verse there's 17 words and 67 letters 717 i don't know if that means anything but anyway all right so this number right here, 16,931, is the total number of words in the book of Genesis, uh, excuse me, in Isaiah from 1 to 66. This number here is the 1953rd prime number. You can look that up on a prime factorization calculator. Another way to say 1953 is 31 times 3 times 7 times 3. Is your 313 and your 373. This number here is the total number of words from Genesis to Isaiah. Up to this point, 243.115. Now, if you take 243.115 and add it to its mirror image, you get the 754 and its mirror image, 457. 754, which is Jesus Christ, or Yehoshua HaMashiach. sweet and then finally i want to show you this pattern because it's going to i'm going to use it later on and i want to show you that it makes sense math mathematically so with the understanding that isaiah is one of the most important prophets obviously with the many 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 prophecies about christ 243 115 is all the words of uh, from genesis to the last chapter in isaiah and then we're going to add to it the total number of words in the New Testament with the idea being that the entirety of the New Testament is the complete revelation of Jesus Christ, which is what Isaiah foretold. So that's 137.720 right there. Total Matthew to Revelation. Okay. And the answer is three, 380,835. And another way to say that, and you can you can check it, do the math right now, is 5 times 3 times 7 times 3 times 31 times 3 times 13. There's 373 and 313 twice. Okay? Okay. So now we are going to go to Jeremiah chapter 32, verse, you guessed it, 37. 777th chapter. Let's see if it says anything relevant to the Jewish people. So in Isaiah 66, we had Israel being born. Let me just read this. Verse 37, I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them in my furious anger and great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and let them live in safety. They will be my people and I will be their God. So a theme, so they were born, and then they will be regathered from every land 
Vatican 777. All right. The next chapter, or the next verse we're going to look at is Amos chapter 9. We're going to go verse 14 and 15, and it's the 888th chapter of the Bible. I will bring back my exiled people from Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink wine, their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. So now you have them being replanted. God will replant Israel in their land. Never to be uprooted, establish. Okay. So then we're going to do, I'm going to show you, we're going to do nine. So in the Old Testament, there's only 929 chapters. So in just using the Old Testament, you can't get to 999. But we're going to get to it in a different way. And let's see if it makes sense. All right. So this one is Isaiah 60. And this is where that Isaiah 60 comes in. That Mandy mentioned, so that jumped out to me. Um, I'm going to read to you. Isaiah 60. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See darkness cover the earth, thick darkness is over the people, but the Lord rises upon you, his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Okay, and it goes on, you can read the whole thing. But the idea is that at more towards the end, when Jesus comes back and he's established as in ruling and reigning on the earth from his throne on Jerusalem, all the nations of the earth will come bow before the throne and kind of, so that, you know, that's the Isaiah 60 kind of fulfillment there. So there's a theme uh, of being, first of all, reborn, born in a day, then being regathered to the land and then planted and established in it. And then there's restoration and redemption that happens after that, where after you're planted, restored, and you're there, and God restores you, people will come to the brightness, you know, they, they will come and see, you know, the glory of God once again through Israel. So it's a, it's a logical theme uh, that you can kind of follow. So how do we get to the 999? So you have the 700, so Isaiah 60 is the 739th chapter of the Bible. Okay, now let me open. All right, so 739. We have 739. Now there are 260 chapters in the New Testament, 260 chapters. So using the same kind of model that we did before with taking all the words from Genesis to Isaiah and adding them to the entirety of the New Testament because the New Testament is the complete fulfillment of Jesus Christ, of the prophecies of Isaiah. You find the full fulfillment in the New Testament. So we're going to take Isaiah 60, chapter 739 and add the 260 chapters of the New Testament and you get... Nine hundred and ninety nine, and the nine hundred and ninety ninth chapter of the Bible, as you guessed it, John chapter two, New Testament chapter number seventy. You have nine hundred and twenty nine chapters in the Old Testament plus the seventy up to John nine ninety nine, John chapter two. So then we will open that up. So John chapter 2, talking about the wedding at Cana. 
verse number six, it talks about six stone water jars, six days of creation, 6,000 years possibly. And it says, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. There's a 20 30 reference. Now, the King James and other translations say two to three firkins. It's 10 uh, firkins or 10 gallons to a firkin. So you have a 20 30 reference and a 20 23 reference, all connected with wine and the first wedding and the last wedding. And it's the 999th chapter of the Bible, kind of an end cap to this theme. Of being redeemed, of being born in a day, being redeemed, replanted, restored, and then re whatever born. I don't know, <laughs> raised up and gone to be with Jesus. That is pretty cool, guys. Love you all. Hope you enjoyed this study, and see you in the next video. And then one really quick thing I forgot to mention, so I'm splicing it in at the end here of this video. In Amos chapter 9, where it talks about, um, so in Amos 9, 888, book of the Bible, talking about replanting, I'll be replanted, okay, so my people Israel, they will re rebuild desolate cities and inhabit them, they will plant vineyards and they will drink their wine it is the 2023rd word of this book, the book of Amos. So talking about the Feast of New Wine, they will drink their wine, 2023. Sweet, let's go!